Well, folks, we're back today here in Beat. It's the 29th of April. Um, the camera probably can't pick it up just in the picture at the moment. The, the beat has emerged. We can just about see it in the lines. Uh, this year's crop again is Enermax. It was sown on the 11th of April. I said so it's in the ground just over two weeks at this stage. A um, little bit of background to the crop because it's something we've been asked a lot about this year and it's topical. The crop is sown, I normally sow after a cover crop anyway, but this year it was sown after Westworlds. The Westworlds were sown last July. Um, all the P and the K for this year's beet crop, which was a very heavy dressing of farmyard manure and slurry, was applied last July. That has supplied all the P and K for the Westworlds, which was harvested on the 6th of October. We took a cut of silage and again we took a cut of silage on the Thursday before we actually sowed the beet on the 11th. So some people are worried about Westworlds regrowing in the beet. It can be a tricky grass crop to get rid of if you don't control it. We burnt it off before we saw it, even though that was only about four days after mowing the grass. Seemed to have done a good job. Seedbed was good. Uh, Ploughing conditions were good, so I'm happy at the moment. Very low level of slug activity. A nod beet plant as you walk across the field, you'd see with a nip off at above ground, and that's your slugs. But by and large, I'm very happy the way the establishment is coming. While it has been Baltic for the last few weeks, it's good for the soil that we've at last had rain. We've probably had 20 mil of rain since the beet was sown. The beet is just barely at cotyledon stage, but already we have, and I know these are runched because I know the, the weed spectrum in the field, you have runched there throwing out two true leaves. So very simply, my weed control program is not going to change, and we've already had phone calls from people who had beet ready to spray last week. Is, is there any reason to do anything different? No. This is all about timing. As you look across the field, you wouldn't say there's any hint of weed until you get down really close and look. First chance I get, I'll be spraying this field because while there are very few, there are weeds at that size. The program doesn't change year to year. 30 grams per hectare of Debu, 0.5 a litre of Max Pro, 0.5 a litre of Galtix, 0.4 of a litre of Venzar. I will apply probably 60% of all of those rates when I go, which is probably about four days away, giving the forecast. I'll put full rate super appease oil for the T1 with that, which, which is 0.5 of a litre per hectare. Six days after that, R5, R7, watching the weather, I'll be back in with that exact same 60% of the herbicide rates and the full rate of oil. I'll also be putting in boron probably with the second spray. We'll talk later on with the second video about how we follow on with the T2, but I'm basically doing the exact same program. But the key is, and it was a key point for last year's weed control, it's all about timing. Last year with the weather was very difficult. Some people delayed the intervals because of the drought. It wasn't actually the right thing to do. And the small number of weeds that were big at the start, once they get going, they get very hard to hold back. So basically spray as quick as you can. We also, and I get asked about it a lot, I was out of the field here with the roller probably three minutes after the beet seeder. Conditions allowed me to do that. It was very fine, it was very dry. Nice firm seed bed, that's helping leather jacket control, it's helping slug control. I see it as a fundamental step in, in growing beet successfully and getting good establishment. So we'll wait and see what happens over the next few weeks.